Alright, so in this video we're going to be doing some examples on fluid viscosity and shear stress. And in this first problem, we're given something like a fluid, and there's a plate that is being moved on the top, and it is moving at a velocity of or a speed of 0 0.32 meters per second in the direction of this force F, so horizontally. And basically this creates a velocity profile that is described by this equation. So basically we're given the height, the, the distance between the plate and the space. And we have all the fluid properties here. So basically we have water. Uh, it is at 25 degrees Celsius, so that's just room temperature. And the density of water at this temperature is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. And if we look up tables of values for water at standard conditions, we are going to find that the viscosity is going to be equal to this value right here. So having identified all those, what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to calculate the velocity gradient du over dy. So in this case, we're given that u is this function of y, so basically all we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this, so this is going to become 40 minus 1600 times y. And what are the units of this? Well, this should be units of s to the minus 1. And the reason for that is that if we have, in this case, u over y remember that u is just meters per uh, per second and then delta y is just going to be in units of meters so the meters cancel out and we're left with 1 over s which is the same as s to the power of minus 1 so this is going to be the units of that uh, velocity gradient now we need to consider two cases we need to consider the speed um, at the bottom, so the shear stress at the bottom here and the shear stress on the top. So what we're going to do is let's start with, since y is starting from here, we're going to be looking at the bottom first. So at y equals to zero, we're going to have the following shear stress, mu times du over dy at y equals to zero. And if we plug in all those values, we're going to get the following shear stress. So that's going to be 35.88 per times 10 to the power of minus 3 pascals. So very small shear stress here. Then at y equals to 10 millimeters, which is the same as 0 0.01 meters, remember that we need to use standard units here. We're going to have shear stress equals to mu uh, du over dy at 0 0.01 and then if we plug in all those values this is going to give us 21.53 times 10 to the power of minus 3 pascals so we can see that even though because this is moving faster at the top we're going to have less shear stress at the top obviously that means that we're going to have a lot the fluid is going to have less resistance to motion as it does in the bottom. So that's basically what this illustrates. Now let's have a look at another example that uses some sort of similar concepts, but hopefully it will help you understand a little bit of what fluids are doing in this case and what, what the effect of viscosity and shear stress are on the fluid's motion. So let's say we have two plates so we have two plates like this and then we have another plate that is very thin between them so let's say that they have the same distance between them let's make this 12.5 millimeters and 12.5 millimeters now let's say we want to move that plate at some velocity equals to one meters per second all right so what do you think is going to happen with this well because this is all fluid around it, we're going to essentially have two forces acting on this. We're going to have a shear force that is going to be acting on the top surface of that plate. So let's call this F1. And we're going to have another force acting at the bottom area, and it's going to be F2. So now the, the question is, what is the total force that is opposing that motion? So. The first thing we need to do to solve this is identify the kind of velocity profile that we're going to have. So because it is not given in the problem and because this 
distances are so small, we can often assume that the profiles are going to be linear. So in the case that there's nothing, no information given about the velocity profile in the problem, we can assume that it's going to be linear. So what that means is that we're going to draw our little plate here. And now we can imagine that the velocity of the fluid is going to be higher, closer to this thing that is moving, to this plate that is moving. So if we have a linear velocity profile, it's going to look like this. And the center is going to look from the bottom. So really all we need to do here is we need to say, well, the velocity profile is going to be the same if we look at it from both directions. And because it is linear, it's going to have a gradient of 1. That's what we would assume in this kind of problem. So to find the forces, what we're going to do is we're going to have F1 equals to what? Well, we know that shear stress, we know that shear stress is just going to be force over area. So we can rearrange that formula to get force equals shear stress times area. So now the shear stress is going to be the viscosity of the fluid. And this is going to be multiplied by the velocity profile, du over dy, times the area. So what is the area going to be? Well, in the problem, let's say that the area is 0 0.2 meters squared. And the viscosity, let's say that it's 0 0.4 newtons times second over meter squared. So now we, all we're going to do is we're going to develop an equation for this velocity profile. So d over dy is going to be equal to 1. So basically that's the velocity here. That's the maximum velocity that's going to attain over the distance. So the distance is going to go from the bottom to the plate or from the top to the plate. So it's going to be the same in this case, 12.5 times 10 to the minus 3, s minus 1. So that's going to be our uh, velocity profile. So this is going to become 0 0.4 times 1 over 12.5 times 10 to the minus 3 times the area, which is 0 0.2. And this is going to give us a uh, total force of 6.4 newtons. Now, force 2 is going to be calculated using the same method. But now we know that because these profiles are the same, then the forces should be the same. So that means that this is also going to be 6.4 newtons. And in the end, the total force is just going to be the sum of those forces. So this is going to be 12.8 newtons. And hopefully this just illustrates some of the applications of viscosity into fluid motion. Obviously, we taking into consideration very very simple examples here but this is just to show you the basic concepts and how they're applied to the analysis of problems in fluid mechanics.